Did you say before? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in front of you today. Um, welcome to the uh, the big iftar here at the uh, the Istanbul Mosque, the Mubarak Mosque. Of course, I think you've already been taken around on a uh, a tour of the site, and I hope uh, they've answered any of your questions. And I do hope you did ask those the awkward questions that I mentioned before as well. Um, we are live streaming right now, so there's people joining in um, across the world who are tuning in right now as well. Uh, and also we have people here in the, in the room with us for those people sitting in at home. Just a bit of housekeeping. I'm told that there is uh, the toilets here on the right for the men and just around on the other side, there are toilets for the women. And of course, there's the, uh, the exit out there to your, to your right and to my left. Um, of course, I had the privilege to speak to some of you uh, this morning uh, at the, uh, the Sahur or the Sehri. And we talked a little bit about uh, what we'd be expecting over the day. And I'm really excited to, uh, to hear from some of you as well as to your experiences of the fast. And uh, we'll get to that in a, in a moment or two. Um, and also, of course, we'll be hearing from some members of the, uh, the Surrey and Sussex Police. I was going to only mention the Surrey Police, and somebody <laughs> quite rightly corrected me on that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll also be having a, uh, a, a small talk uh, by uh, Mr. Muhammad Ibrahim Ikhlif, um, who is... Uh, a, a very learned scholar, and I'll give a bit more of an introduction to him a little bit later on. And also there will be a question and answer session as well. Uh, so you should have a little paper slips for those here in this room. Just jot your questions down and we'll come to them a little bit later on. And for everyone at home, uh, you can uh, send in your questions via the YouTube live chat. Uh, and also you can come on via Facebook and the handle is at the True Islam UK. So you can send your questions via that. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to please uh, request uh, Mr. Khalid Gonzalez. We start off our formal sessions usually with a recitation from the Holy Quran. So that I call Mr. Khalid Gonzalez for that uh, to be followed by the translation, please. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all. <clears throat> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تتوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تسوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى 
والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريدكم العسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عن فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون Things just translation is as follows this is, these recited verses are from the chapter Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, from verses 184 to 187. O oh, ye who believe, fasting is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may guard against evil. The prescribed fasting is for a fixed number of days, but whoso among you is sick or is on a journey shall fast the same number of other days, and for those who are able to fast only with great difficulty is an expiation, the feeding of a poor man. And whoso does good of his own accord, it is better for him. And fasting is good for you, if only you knew. The month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance for mankind with clear proofs of guidance and discrimination. Therefore, whosoever of you is present at home in this month, let him fast therein. But whoso is temporarily sick or is on a journey shall fast the same number of other days. Allah desires ease for you and he desires not hardship for you. And he desires that you may complete the number and that you may exalt Allah for his having guided you and that you may be grateful. And when my servants ask thee about me, say, I am near. I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he prays to me. So they should hearken to me and believe in me that they may follow the right way. Thank you. Jazakallah. I'm told to uh, remove my mask so that people can hear me clearly, which is a, a, a godsend. Um, thank you very much for that recitation there. Um, we're now going to have a short video, which is an introduction to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, give you a bit more of an insight as to the community and what it's about. So hopefully they can line that up right now. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a dynamic, fast-growing international revival movement within Islam. Founded in 1889, the community spans more than 195 countries, with membership exceeding tens of millions. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is the only Muslim community to believe that the long-awaited promised Messiah has arrived in the person of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, India. The promised Messiah claimed to be the metaphorical second coming of Jesus of Nazareth, and the divine guide whose advent was foretold by the holy prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace be upon him. The community believes that Allah has sent the promised Messiah to end religious wars, condemn bloodshed, and to reinstitute morality, justice, and peace for mankind. The advent of the Promised Messiah has brought an unprecedented era of Islamic revival. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is the leading Islamic organization that categorically rejects any form of terrorism. Over a century ago, the Promised Messiah emphatically declared that the doctrine of violent jihad goes against the teachings of the Holy Quran and the practice of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. The Promised Messiah's advent has ushered in a new era of dialogue, tolerance and prayer. The Promised Messiah penned over 80 books and thousands of articles, delivering countless lectures, engaging in public debate and prayer duels in an intellectual, spiritual campaign to defend the true honour of Islam. 
The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a foremost Islamic organization with a central spiritual leader. Over a century ago, the Promised Messiah reminded his followers of Allah's promise to safeguard the message of Islam through Khilafat, the spiritual institution of successorship to prophethood. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community believes that only the spiritual successorship can uphold the true values of Islam and unite humanity. Five spiritual leaders have succeeded the Promised Messiah since his passing in 1908. The fifth head of the community, His Holiness Hazrat Mizam Surur Ahmad, resides in the United Kingdom. Under the leadership of its spiritual successors, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has built over 15,000 mosques, over 500 schools and more than 30 hospitals. It has translated the Holy Quran to over 60 languages. The community propagates the peaceful true teachings of Islam through a 24-hour broadcast channel, MTA, through the community's website, alislam.org, and print, Islam International Publications. The community has been at the forefront of disaster response worldwide through an independent charity, Humanity First. Talk about taking a cue. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, so now coming up, we actually have, uh, of course, everyone here has uh, been fasting, so at least uh, the majority of us have, and we've got uh, a fantastic opportunity to hear from a few of you guys who, who have been uh, joining us on this uh, on this fasting day. By the way, if, if my brain doesn't catch up with my mouth, then please do. I mean, I guess you guys do know what I'm going through right now. So. Um, so we've got, uh, first of all, I'll give a little bit of an introduction to, uh, we have four um, brilliant eminent speakers with us today who are going to be giving us their take on how the day has been going by, and I'll give a bit of a, a bio and an introduction to each of them. I think the bio is more for me than it is for you guys. You probably know, you probably know them better than I do. Um, so first coming up, we have uh, Assistant Chief Constable Alison Barlow, uh, Ali, as I'm told to um, abbreviate the name to, uh, joined the Surrey Police in 1993 and has worked in a variety of roles throughout her service, including response, neighborhood policy, Policing, rather. I probably should get that name right. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbourhood policing, conduct and deployment, and criminal justice and custody. In 2017, on promotion to Chief Superintendent, uh, Ali took over as Divisional Commander for West Surrey. She is currently Temporary Assistant Chief Constable, responsible for local policing, and holds the force's Neighbourhood Policing Portfolio, which I'm told she is very passionate about. Alongside her role as Temporary um, Assistant Chief Constable, uh, Ali is a mum of two teenage daughters, who keep her busy. I think I probably should have started with that. Uh, <laughs> all yours, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it, I have to say, this has been um, a real eye-opener and an absolute privilege to be involved in this uh, fasting collective this year. I was aware um, of it going on uh, last year, but I wasn't involved last year, but I saw colleagues um, all through our amazing uh, inclusion team led by Lucy and, uh, and Fahan and seeing some of the colleagues experience um, what our Muslim colleagues and communities, um, you know, commit to every single year for this holy month. Um, and this year I was really curious. Um, I wanted to understand more about the reasons uh, for the fasting, why uh, Muslims do this um, and, you know, and have done so for so long. Um, and rather than it being just an, a story on an intranet that I've read probably the last 29 years whilst I've been in policing, where officers are given, officers and staff are, are given information um, about Ramadan, I actually wanted to experience it um, this year. Um, hence why um, when Fahan asked for uh, people to join the Fasting Collective that I put my name forward. Um, and this year um, we have, I think, 78 officers and staff across Surrey and Sussex, um, which is amazing. And it's really about us showing our support um, for our amazing uh, colleagues and communities uh, to really understand and to reflect um, about really trying to understand what um, this means. And my experience today, obviously getting up very, very um, early this morning, I am an early riser, so that wasn't that wasn't too, too bad. Uh, and the amazing, uh, introduction and 
pep talk you gave us uh, this morning um, to get us uh, on our way. And it's what's been lovely is being able to do it together um, and to experience this um, together. And so how have I found it? Um, Hunger-wise, it's been okay, actually. I'm really thirsty. <laughs> But it's not about me. Um, and I think that's what I took um, from hearing the mom this morning um, about what it means and, and, the, and the history and, and why, why uh, Muslims fast. And it is about that reflection. And it's about thinking of other people who are less fortunate. So it's not about being selfish. It's about thinking about others and that real self-reflection. So throughout the day, um, I think I have worked probably at a slower pace, and that's not because I've not been eating or, or drinking. I think I've had the time to be able to do some um, reflection today. And whilst my diary has been busy, we, I was talking to colleagues um, earlier, and actually, when you think about it, there's so much time in the day when you are grazing and you're just consuming yourself. And actually, by being able to fast today, as we all have together, um, I have had that time to be able to do something different and to really think. Um, and so for me, it's been about taking that story that we often see on our intranet pages, giving us information about what our colleagues and our communities are doing and actually being part of that story and that experience. So for me, that has been truly um, a real um, privilege to be able to be part of that today. Um, as, um, as you heard from my bio, I am passionate about policing and Surrey Police and Sussex Police have a very long history um, of uh, neighbourhood policing and real strong investment in neighbourhood policing. And it's one of the commitments um, that we have made to our community. You know, Surrey Police has uh, commitments. We want to be a very inclusive organisation. And that's um, obviously about being able to, um, you know, involve ourselves in events such as this with our communities, both within the organization um, and externally. And I'm ashamed to say, you know, I've been in Surrey for, this is my 29th year, and I have never been here before. I've been to the mosque at Morden that you kindly invited me to, uh, Fahan, um, two, two or so years ago, um, pre-COVID, but I've never been here before. And what a beautiful, beautiful place this is here, that sense of peace, the, mo the most amazing buildings. Um, so it's been an absolute honor to be able to come here today. And I cannot thank you all for enough for not only in what you've done to us for us today in terms of the information that you provided and your real generosity of being so kind and welcoming but just in the support for the fasting collective both across Surrey and Sussex you know the food parcels and the organization and everything that um, you have done to help us uh, to enjoy this uh, experience with you. Uh, you know, I know you've all got sort of full-time jobs and you are doing this for us and delivering those parcels across two huge counties. Um, so I just wanted to say on behalf of all of us involved in this uh, fasting collective, just how grateful I am and we are for your generosity of spirit. It has been a real privilege to be able to take part uh, in this fasting with you today. Um, and I can't wait to hear about other people's experiences. You can definitely put me on the list uh, next year. I will be here again um, and thank you very very much indeed i've never heard someone that you so grateful for not eating food which is really <laughs> <laughs> um thank you so much for your very very kind words um our second uh, our second guest uh, is chief superintendent howard hodges and uh, i'll give you a bit of a background on him again i'm giving this background for the people at home i guess Howard Hodges is the Chief Superintendent from Sussex Police and the Divisional Commander for West Sussex Division. Howard has been a police officer for 27 years and is proud to be the Faith and Belief Equality Champion for Sussex Police, a role he has held for the last year. He is proud to hold this post, which aims to improve trust and confidence in policing externally and ensure that Sussex Police is a diverse, inclusive and representative organisation that is seen as an employer of choice. Uh, Howard, please. Uh, Thank you.
Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, as introduced, I'm Howard Hodges. Uh, I'm a Chief Superintendent from Sussex Police. So actually, most of the people in the room and probably quite a lot of people online, I, I haven't met before. But uh, uh, it is an honour and a privilege to have been invited here this evening. And I'm just hugely humbled, actually, um, uh, and kind of the same as, uh, as Marma said, actually, uh, had no idea really what I was coming to this evening and have just been hugely impressed by the facilities, by the sense of community and just that opportunity to come and experience that with, uh, with you today. It is great that Sussex and Surrey collaboratively have colleagues, many of whom are in the room, and I know a number of online, you know, collectively taking uh, taking uh, the fast uh, and being able being able to open those fasts together uh, in a short while. As the faith and belief equality champion for Sussex Police, I understand fully the importance of supporting faith and belief communities to improve trust and confidence in policing. But equally, it's also about the importance of our own colleagues to have the necessary support internally. Uh, and you may be aware we have the Association of Faith and Spirituality set up, uh, which is an, an internal network set up towards the end of last year that's available for all colleagues across both Surrey and Sussex to join, providing support and advice on matters of faith to both benefit the workforce collectively and their individual selves. In Sussex in particular, we're continuously working with our community groups through our multi-faith advisory group uh, and the meetings that in fact one was held today with members of the public that are from different faiths and beliefs across Sussex. We also have a network of community engagement advisors across the force that are continuously out and about engaging with communities, building stronger relations. This year, celebrating Ramadan does seem to be extra special now that we're out of lockdown, uh, allowing our communities and colleagues to celebrate uh, Ramadan and the Iftar with their family and friends. On a personal note, um, I've, yeah, I am someone who eats quite a lot of food, generally, uh, uh, and I have found it quite difficult, actually, and particularly I think it got to 11 o'clock this morning, uh, and I was thinking, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, but actually, that's eased throughout the day, uh, oddly, uh, and it's only when colleagues, and I think the young lady in the, in the front row mentioned just now about, uh, about food, I actually remembered again that, uh, that, I, that, I, hadn't, that I hadn't eaten. Um, but for me, it is a special opportunity. I haven't, haven't done it before. Uh, and as the Faith and Belief Equality Champion for Sussex Police, we just really, really well, jumped at the opportunity and jumped at the opportunity to come and be present with you today. And I know a lot of colleagues in Sussex uh, will be online. And I know we've got the food parcels at uh, Crawley and at our Lewis headquarters as well. Um, so finally, from me, may the month continue to bring everyone an abundance of blessings and all your prayer and fasts be accepted. Thank you very much. So I mean, I'm into that. Uh, a lovely prayer to end with us all. So thank you very much for your very, very kind words. Uh, I've got a feeling we're going to be saying thank you for your kind words for the next two speakers as well. But uh, do bear with me. Uh, you can imagine different variations of the words in your head. Uh, next person that we're going to be speaking to or hearing from is uh, the Temporary Detective Superintendent Rob Harris. Uh, Rob is Temporary Detective Superintendent for Crime in West Surrey, having 24 years of policing experience. Uh, a lot of this has been on West Surrey, where he was born and raised. There's a song in there somewhere. Rob is a lead for learning within police investigations and has recently delivered a restructure of how Surrey police investigate domestic abuse, child abuse, and other serious and complex crimes. Uh, really looking forward to hearing from you, Rob. Say yours. Thank you very much, sir. The sense of slight imposter syndrome following my previous speakers and, and yourselves. But again, uh, very welcome and many thanks for inviting uh, me. So this is my second year joining. This is my second year joining the Fasting Collective. Uh, and I've again been welcomed with open arms by uh, the Muslim community. Uh, for me, there's been better planning this time round. So I woke up earlier. I got my times right and I ate an awful lot um, uh, before trying to get back to, back to bed for a decent amount of, uh, of time. Um, but alongside me, my wife is also joining in the fasting today. And again, that's the point is, uh, as Mambalo has said, is uh, experiencing this together and having the support of your community, your friends and your, your family. And uh, for me, from a, a white, uh, middle-class Christian background, it's really important that we, we share these experiences and the, this awareness. And it's lovely that my children are asking about it and really looking forward to seeing the photos and hearing about my experience tonight. 
throughout the day uh, when I did get to work, I've taken um, opportunities to pause and reflect. So as you will have heard, um, some of the things that I am involved in in policing, and a lot of my colleagues are here too. One of our key, our key aims is um, making our community safe. And on a daily basis, unfortunately, we do face members of the community who aren't safe, who need care, who need that love and compassion, and perhaps don't have access uh, to the wonderful food, drink, plain water from the tap that we take for granted. So I've been reflecting on that and my role in how I can uh, and do help that, both within my job and also within my community. Uh, you heard that I've been a long-term resident of Farnham and it was about 20 years ago I first came to Islamabad and helped with the Jalsa festivals. And believe me, my, me and my colleagues at that point who were based in the old Farnham police station um, had never seen the site of 30,000 30, members of your community uh, coming together in prayer and festival as well. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, they were long, hard, hot days, but again, we were very, very well looked after and um, experienced some of the, the old, the very old site was, that was here at the time and also some of your hospitality. It's lovely to see how that has developed how it has grown and as a uh, on a very regular basis meeting members of your community certainly out in the Farnham area especially those from the Muslim, uh, Ahmadiyya Youth Association. I also had quite a big day today so I had a, an interview a very, a very important interview and my view going into that uh, because many people said why on earth are you whilst fasting, was that if I can show one, one day of the dedication and the commitment that Muslim colleagues and Muslim members of the community do uh, for the entire period of Ramadan, um, then you know, that is the least I can do. So it was very special. Um, it was important that I did that um, to show that support and solidarity. And you know we are nearing uh, iftar, where I've got really just a dry throat. But that's probably because I talk too much as well. So uh, thank you again. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, yes, um, best wishes for the rest of the month. Thank you very much. Uh, I won't ask how the interview went, but if they can see uh, the sincerity <laughs> and the, the genuineness that we've seen to you today, I'm sure that they will be... Uh, Passing you with flying colours? Do I say that? No? Oh, okay. Um, so thank you very much again. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I've got, I've got the thumbs up. Good. <laughs> so thank you very much for that as well. Um, our next speaker is Acting Inspector for West Surrey, Chris Pike. Chris manages a large team in Surrey and his focus is on neighbourhood policing, uh, authentically understanding the needs of all communities Surrey supports and protects. Uh, I can say that with both without a comma and with a comma, I guess. Um, so he supports and protects, indeed it does. Uh, Chris is a big advocate for understanding diverse communities and inspired many both this Ramadan and last where he observed fasts for the entirety of Ramadan. Wow, I feel like I need to read that again. So he's, he's fast this Ramadan and he, where he fasts all the fasts last Ramadan as well. So gosh, wow, I'm, I'm, in, I'm impressed. I'm also lost for words. Anyway, uh, Chris Pike, please. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening and assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Chris Pike. I'm Acting Inspector for West Surrey on Neighbour Policing. Uh, firstly, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to share Fatah with you and to join you in celebrating uh, your highest month year, which is obviously Ramadan, uh, the month in which I believe the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through the angel Gabriel. Uh, as stated, this is my second year participating in Ramadan. Uh, my reasons for do so initially was to uh, understand and support some Muslim friends. Uh, I was intrigued to uh, how it would feel to fast and uh, what my colleagues and friends experience uh, when they do fast. Uh, so after completing uh, Ramadan last year, 
uh, and maybe appreciate the things in my life which I take advantage of, uh, not just that of people, but also things like having a roof over my head uh, and obviously the community that I live in. Uh, the importance of this has been further highlighted with the current conflict uh, in Europe. Uh, and it's made me think about mankind. It's made me think about the atrocities of war and at the same time, how people remain steadfast in adhering to the practice of their religious beliefs. Uh, of course, uh, this reflects for Christian Jews and followers of other faiths too. Uh, I feel that I've been fortunate to learn from my experience through fasting uh, and certainly myself and my colleagues feel honoured and privileged to be given the opportunity to break our fast with yourselves today. Uh, Ramadan has also helped me consider my lifestyle and to recenter, uh, give me the opportunity to be healthier and I'm not just referring to my unhealthy reliance on my Nespresso coffee machine. <laughs> Some people might like to say unhealthy, but you know. Uh, also, zakat, uh, the making of donations to charity, is something which is central to the Muslim faith, and has certainly highlighted to me how we all can make a difference in other people's lives, not just that of financial money, but also giving people our time to give support and compassion to those people around us. For all those reasons, this is why I've decided to fast again this year and inshallah I'll be able to successfully make some uh, positive changes in my life. Again, thank you for the kind invite. Uh, I wish you all Ramadan Mubarak and at the end of this month, uh, Holy Month, Eid Mubarak to you and all your families. Thank you. I, uh, I might ask for a copy of that speech for next year. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's really good to see that everyone is... It's not as I, as we said in the morning. It's not just to be about not just about being hungry and thirsty. It's about realizing what more of an impact we can have on the people around us. And it's amazing to see that you've uh, you've been feeling that as well. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I believe I have to give everyone about a ten second pre warning before I say anything because they have to get the the mechanics working behind. But I believe we have a poll coming up. Ten second gap. Okay, um, that wasn't ten seconds, but. We have a poll coming up. I think there's a question that's going to come up on the screen. Um, for those at home, or indeed here as well, um, you can join in the poll by going to slido.com. That's S-L-I-D-O.com. And the, uh, the code to join is I-B-F. That's slido.com. And the code to join is I-B-F. Right. Um, I think is, the, is the question up on screen? Indeed it is. Good. So the question says, uh, and I'll read it out, uh, do you believe that religion can answer all or most societal problems or that religion is largely old fashioned and out of date? I do believe it's uh, anonymous as well. So I mean, there's no, we're not really calling anyone out afterwards. Um, so it's A, yes, religion is answer to societal problems. B, no, religion is old fashioned and out of date. Or C, no opinion. Do you believe that religion can answer all or most societal problems? Or that religion is largely old-fashioned and out of date? A, B, or C? Um, if I get the go-ahead, has everyone, has everyone voted? Or can we move on? Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting the nod from at least two people, so I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, okay, great. So I think... Um, I can't actually see the results from here. Someone would be kind enough to read the results out. So I think people are still voting then. So I guess we can see 70, is that 78%? 78. I'll give it a couple of minutes because I think people are still voting. It's a good way. It's, I mean, our, the iftar is opening at about eight minutes past. So I mean, if we can keep watching this for a few more minutes, I mean, <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll call it, a, we'll call, oh, my eyesight's terrible, is that, is that 69% at the top? It keeps changing, doesn't it? Okay, I, I think we're gonna, we'll, we'll, go for the, we'll go for the majority, went for the a, option A, some people went for option B, and uh, uh, a couple of people went for option C. Right, good, brilliant. Uh, moving on to our next uh, item on the agenda. We are joined right now by uh, Mr. Muhammad Ibrahim uh, Ikhlaf Saab, who is a, uh, I'll read a bit of a bio about him. This is where... I know more about him than you do, so actually, that makes, makes sense for me to read it out. He's a Director of Outreach and Public Relations at the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association United Kingdom. He's a lecturer, teacher at the Jamia Ahmadiyya UK Institute, 
which is a specialist institute which looks into religious education with a focus on theology and modern languages. He's in charge of the International Arabic English Translation and Research Office. Uh, uh, Mr. Ibrahim is of Arab descent and studied Arabic and Islamic studies at the University of, correct my pronunciation, Leiden? Leiden. Leiden. It's one or the other, isn't it, right? At the University of Leiden in the Netherlands and the University of Leuven. Yes, got one out of two. Uh, and the University of Leuven in Belgium. He also studied economics at London Kingston University in the United Kingdom. So uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim all these English guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have accepted our invitation today. Today's event, as has been mentioned, is to a certain extent a unique event. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Youth Association UK and the UK's National Outreach and Public Relations Department took this initiative to organize the National Fasting Challenge in which many non-Muslims took the challenge to offer a one-day fast, five-day fast, or more, as we could see, to obtain or to reap these physical, mental, and spiritual benefits of Ramadan or of fasting. Indeed, we are really impressed and amazed to see so many people participating in this National Fasting Challenge all throughout the UK. I will start with a narration from the Ahadith, a collection of narrations of the Holy Prophet, narrated by his companion Abu, of the Holy Prophet Abu Huraira, who was a companion of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God on him, he narrated that God said, Allah, the Almighty says that all deeds of a man are for his sake alone, except are for his own sake, except the fast. The fast is kept for my sake alone, and I am the reward for it. The fast is a shield against evil. Thus, when any one of you is fasting, he should neither indulge in idle talk nor raise his voice. If anyone abuses him or starts quarreling with him, he should say, I am fasting. Let Allah, the possessor of Muhammad and his life bear me out. The breath of one who is fasting is pure in the sight of Allah than the fragrance of musk. One who fasts experiences two joys. He is joyful when he breaks the fast, and he is joyful when he meets God the Almighty. In another narration, the Prophet said, Allah said he abandons his food, drink, and desires for my sake. Fasting is for me, and I am the reward. A single good deed, up to 10 times the like of it. You will ask yourself, how do, the Mus how do Muslims put the burden on themselves to abstain from food, drink, conjugal relations from dawn to dusk? Is this not adding or completing, in fact, in this world of so much unhappiness, wars and so many other vices and evil, is this not completing the spiral of unhappiness? The answer is simple and straightforward. 
we as Muslims believe that true happiness, tranquility, serenity is to be obtained through our strong belief in the creator of the universe, serving him and serving his creation. He, we believe God in Arabic, Allah is the Lord of all mankind who takes care of us and provides everything to everyone without any distinction. We believe in that one God who is the Lord of all nations, all races and all religions. Therefore, how could a true believer ever develop any kind of hatred in his heart for any nation, any race or any religion? Indeed, our desire, our desire as Muslims is to serve mankind day and night to attract the pleasure of God. That's why we fast. We fast in order to seek and win God's pleasure. We fast to meet him. We fast to abandon every kind of misguidance, wrongdoing, cruelty, and injustice in turning completely to God. It is as we were to climb a steep hill in discarding all our old ways and habits, abandon all our personal desires, which one has been subject all his life, all one's life, and to turn towards his creator. Away from all considerations of egoism, honor, self-esteem, and showing off, deeming everything beside God as non-existent. Indeed, it is such an enterprise that amounts to certain death. Such a death is the source of spiritual birth. Until a grain is buried, until a grain is buried in the earth and gives up its shape, it's impossible for a new grain to come into being. In the same way, the body of a spiritual birth is created from the death, which is called in Arabic, al-fana. Faith, when we talk about faith, what is faith? Faith means acceptance at a stage when knowledge is not yet complete and the struggle of an individual with doubts and suspicions about the existence of God, does he exist or not? is still in progress. He who believes has faith on the basis of probability. Despite his weakness and the lack of perfect means of certainty is counted in the eyes of God, the Supreme One, as a righteous one. When a pious one, on hearing the call of a prophet or a commissioned one from God, does not just go at mocking at the religion or criticizing, but takes that portion which he recognizes truth and understand it on the basis of clear proofs and considers that which is unable to understand, metaphorical or allegorical, and thus removing all contradictions out of the way, just believes simply because he sees and believes in the prophet, then God Almighty gives him the drink of the cup of understanding in having pity on him and opens the gates of perfect understanding for him and leads him to perfect certainty through visions, revelations, and other heavenly signs. In fact, he starts to experience what prophets experience, such as Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, and all other prophets. The Quran say, states, Shaharu Ramadan, alladhi the month of Ramadan is that in which the Holy Quran was sent down as a guidance for mankind. Let's understand, first understand, what does it mean, the word Ramadan? In Arabic, when we say Ramadas, Ramadas Sa'im, means that the inside of the fasting man became very hot with thirst owing to heat. When we say Ramadan Nahar, means the day became intensely hot. This refers to physical and spiritual warmth and heat during the Ramadan. In other words, 
Fasting in this month causes heat and burning due to thirst. Worship and devotion in this month burns away the traces of sins in men. Worship and devotion in this month produce the, in the heart of men the warmth of love for his God, for his creator and his creation or his fellow beings. Let's look into the beauty, the mysteries of this divine word, the Holy Quran. It's very interesting that the Holy Book, the Quran has been revealed during the month of Ramadan, which is interestingly the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar. Although the Holy Quran, in fact, has been sent down gradually throughout the 23 years prophethood of the Holy Prophet. Why has the Quran been sent during the month of Ramadan? To answer this, let's first understand what Al-Quran means. Al-Quran has many meanings. One of the meanings is, if we say in Arabic, Qara'at al-Imra'a, means the woman became pregnant and brought forth a child. Ramadan is the ninth month of the lunar calendar. This means that like a pregnant woman who delivers a child during the ninth month, the sincere believers who do their utmost effort to implement the Holy Quran and its instruction through fasting during the month of Ramadan and abstain from food and drink over a certain period, occupy themselves greatly with the remembrance of God and worship him during this month will be bestowed a new life as a newborn baby. They will gain strength and deep perception and the hidden truths of the Holy Quran and the spiritual world. It will be revealed to them to the extent that the Quran, which not only contains visible truth as a book which we read or study, which may be seen by everyone, believer or non-believer, but like a pregnant woman bearing a child, it contains truths that lies hidden from the eyes of most men. And like a newborn child, come to light only as and when the time is ripe, and this in the month of Ramadan. In this modern era, the person who, according to our faith, was sent by God to enlighten the world and revive the true teachings of Islam was the founder of the Ahmadiyya community, who we believe to be the promised Messiah, the Imam Mahdi, Mirza Hazrat, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, peace be on him. He was sent to show the world what Islam truly is and to propagate his teaching to all the parts of the world. And we as men of our community are here telling you and informing you about the true teachings of, of Islam. On fasting, he said, the Prophet Messiah, fasting does not mean that men should merely refrain from eating and drinking. It holds far a greater purpose, and its effect can only be realized through experience. It is the inherent nature of man that the less one consumes, the more purified the soul becomes, and spiritual strength accelerates. God desires through this that we decrease one form of diet and increase in another. A person who fasts should always bear in mind that the purpose is not to starve themselves, but to occupy themselves with self-discipline and remembrance of God. The essence of fasting for men to limit himself from one nourishment and attain another form of nourishment, the spiritual one, which is satisfying the soul. Those who fast for the pleasure of God and not just as a ritual, should occupy themselves in remembering God the Almighty. He also said, during this month, one should discard one's preoccupation with eating and drinking. He should cut all his needs, should completely submit himself to God. And he said, unfortunate is the one who is bestowed material bread and pays no attention to spiritual bread. Material strength and body and spiritual bread stays soul and sharpens our spiritual faculties. Indeed, this month creates such a zeal in us, a strength and control over our emotions and love for God, who is the creator of this universe, that a person 
obtain such a relation with God as people have with the things of this world. And this love burns down this material, the love for this materialistic life and all that is beside of God. And instead, our hearts will be fulfilled with happiness, peace, and tranquility. The famous 13th century saint Jalaluddin Rumi writes, ignorance is God's prison, knowing is God's palace. Be empty of worrying, think of who created thought. Why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? The Holy Prophet Muhammad said, peace and blessings of God on him, worldly life is a prison for the believer. This means that the believer could suffer physically and undergo torture, but he will always have the tranquility, tranquility and serenity. Speak. The Holy Prophet mentioned as well, when the holy month of Ramadan arrives, the gates of he heavens are opened and the doors of hell are closed and the satanic forces are bound in shackles. What we learn from this is that the month of Ramadan is a month of God's mercy, his forgiveness and salvation to get rid of evil and sins and protection from satanic forces. Therefore, when God's mercy descends, then God will grant the worshiper that strength to perform good deeds. And those good deeds, subsequently gaining the position of acceptance, will lead to our salvation. And so the gates of heavens are opened for us. Ramadan teaches us as well that it is not enough for a Muslim to wait until someone asks him for help. That is having creating that compassion for others. That's one of the objectives of Ramadan. Rather, it's our duty to recognize the suffering of others and to make whatever sacrifices are required in order to help them overcome their challenges and trouble. For example, the Holy Prophet Muhammad said, I am with the weak because aiding the weak and the poor is the means of reaching Allah, the Almighty. The Holy Quran has instructed Muslims to serve mankind and to fulfill the needs of those who are suffering or are deprived in any way. It requires us to be selfless and consumed by love for others. It requires us to be ever ready to make sacrifices for the sake of peace and the well-being of others. True Muslims are people who promote goodness, stay away from evil and injustice, and they encourage others to perform good deeds. Such profound love for humanity is impossible unless our hearts are pure and free from malice and selfishness and egoism. If Muslims desire to attain the love of God, they must first show love to the creation of God. It is not a religion of extremism. Islam is not a religion of violence. Islam is not a religion of terrorism. It is a religion of love, compassion, and tolerance. On one occasion, the Prophet Messiah said, serving humanity is in itself a form of worship. To fail to help a brother in time of difficulty is utterly immoral and wrong. Treat all creation of God with such deep love as though they are your close family members. Treat mankind, he said, in the same way that a mother treats her child. This is the way you should be, and not that you help someone only so that you can attain certain benefit later or take a favor in return. Today's world has become like a global village. Every nation is now interconnected. And the, means, and the means of communications are there, which makes us a global village. As a result, more than ever before, it's our duty, duty of all humankind, to foster a spirit of brotherhood and mutual love amongst the people of all nations and all beliefs. Finally, as this program has been organized, by the Ahmadiyya Muslim Youth Association and the Department of Outreach and Public Relations, I would like to say something about the Ahmadiyya Muslim Youth Association. Ahmadiyya Muslim Youth Association 
is continuously serving and contributing to society at all levels through active integration and engagement. The purpose of all these activities is to engender the spirit of discipline and service to the wider community, irrespective of their beliefs, race or gender. Our motto is love for all, hatred for none. Our youth is unified in having one spiritual leader and is united against all forms of extremism and therefore very much engaged in the British society while loyalty to nation is inculcated in the youth from their childhood. Finally, it's amazing to see, for example, their efforts in 2022, just from January until now. They donated, for example, over 1,870 kilograms to food banks, spent 2,188 hours serving causes across the UK, provided more than 300,000 meals to those most vulnerable in our society. Our youth unif uh, is unified because of this, as has been mentioned, caliphate, one spiritual leader, as has been prophesied. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, I mean, you mentioned before about imposter syndrome, so um, I, I don't think I'm going to follow that up very well. So, but thank you very much for that, those very, very deep uh, words. I think it leaves us all with a lot of uh, food for thought as well. I think the, the core message that I took from there is that the month of Ramadan is, for many Muslims, almost like a training camp. It's a period of time within the year where we really focus in on what's important. We put ourselves almost in this like uh, this hyper chamber where we're really alert about what affects us, what affects the people around us, and then to work out how we can become better, how we can become better Muslims for those of us that are Muslims, better theists for those of us that are believers, and generally just better human beings. If our families and our friends don't think that we're good people, then I mean, how can we be good in the sight of God? So I think that's a very, very important point, and thank you very much for enlightening us on that. Um, I'm also acutely aware of the fact that the, uh, the iftar is happening in about 10 minutes, maybe 11. Um, and so your beard is lovely, by the way. Gosh. Um, <laughs> and, and so, again, I, I mentioned this in the morning, that they seem to give me the graveyard shift on both sides. Uh, I'm talking until the iftar for a, a small amount. But uh, we're, we're doing some, um, we, we actually have some certificates that we're going to be giving out as, well, as, a, as a note of uh, thanks for a, a few of the speakers that have spoken today as well. But I think very, very importantly, look, the, the fast today is coming to an end. It's been a day where a lot of us had an opportunity to stop and to think and to reflect. But when the fast finishes, the reason why I said the whole training camp thing before, I mean, that probably has some other kind of, the, the matter that this is a period of time in which you can focus in some when the fast finishes, there is a tendency to think, ah, oh, yes, absolutely done. Where's the food? Where's the cupboard? Where's the fridge? And actually, there's a problem that people might actually forget the things that they learn. Because as soon as that first morsel of food goes in, it's all gone. You're like, wow, okay, I'm happy. And it's important for Muslims, for example, we have this 30-day period. And for me, it's quite interesting because you have this period of on, then you have a period of off. So you have the day in which you're fasting and you're all about worship, you're all about thinking and you're very in tune with your feelings. And suddenly you have this period where you're allowed to eat, you're allowed to do whatever you want until the next morning. And then it starts again. And that switching on and switching off and switching on and switching off actually is a form of training because it enables you and enables Muslims to be able to sacrifice the things that are allowed to us, food, water, our own desires. And it makes us trained in a way that we are then able to sacrifice the things that are not allowed to us. No, we're not allowed to lie. We're not allowed to usurp the rights of others. We're not allowed to be unjust. And suddenly those things become really easy to do because the things that you normally are allowed to do, you will manage to overcome them. So I would say just the thing to take away from this, and this is for all the Muslims and all the non-Muslims, the fast isn't about being hungry. The fast is enabling you to understand just how much more room for growth there is in our conduct and our moral character. And the more aware you are of that, be that in the morning, in the evening, whatever time it is, or lying in bed at night thinking about how your day is gone, that is the true essence of Ramadan. And as 
our eminent speaker has already said today that Ramadan is the two uh, sources of heat, as it were. The heat and the passion for serving God, but also the heat and the passion for serving God's creation. And you can't be a good human being without looking after the people that are around you. And as a Muslim, these two are fundamental columns of our belief. With that, it's eight o'clock. We still have eight minutes left. We still have eight minutes left. But I want to take the opportunity. Um, we have uh, certificates for, um, for esteemed uh, people. We have Assistant Chief Constable Alison Barlow, Chief Superintendent Howard Hodges, Temperature Detective Superintendent Rob Harris, and Assistant Chief Constable Claire Simkin. I mean, I, if, if I was in charge, which I'm definitely not, uh, I would have certificates for everyone. Uh, so from me, there is a certificate to all of you. I'm being given a nod that there is a certificate there for one. See, I, I am in charge. No, no, no. <laughs> so we have uh, for the, so for the following four people, can I can I please uh, request uh, you to come up? Um, we have Assistant Chief Constable uh, Alison Barlow. It's a certificate for uh, our appreciation. And if I can please request uh, Mohammed Ibrahim Al Fasal Bazar to come up. I should have said that first, right? Type two. Uh, thank you so much. Sorry. Uh, can I also have uh, Chief Superintendent Howard Hodges, please? Thank you very much. Uh, Temporary Detective Superintendent Rob Harris, please. And I'm told, uh, even though this is a spiritual experience, Claire Simkin is not here. Uh, you are here. <laughs> Blame him. Blame him. So I'm told that Claire Simkin is here. Um, <laughs> so can I request Assistant Chief Constable Claire Simkin, please? Uh, I had Thank you very much. Um, I mean, that's all from me. Um, we have uh, at 8.08, hopefully, the way that the fast is usually opened is um, usually you'll have a bit of water, you have a, a date or something like that, and there will be food provided after, don't worry. There is food as well. Um, and uh, what happens is at 8.08 approximately, of course, as the, the, the uh the solar calendar changes, you have the difference in the fasting time, so it changes by about a minute or two every morning and every evening. So today the fast will be opening at 8.08, uh, and after that there will be, at the time of 8.08, it's the opening of the fast signaled by the call to prayer, the azan, which hopefully we should be hearing on the loud, uh, the, uh, the loudspeaker system. That's going to be going across the whole of the, uh, the compound. Um, we've actually got permission, and of course you don't have to uh, come if you don't want to, but a lot of us will be going at the time of the opening of prayer. There's like another little piece of uh, of patience which is required, which is the food is uh, you're, you're opening the fast here, and then we'll be heading over to the mosque to pray. Um, and all of you are welcome to join us and to view the prayer from behind. There'll be a seating area where you can all sit down and view the prayer. And uh, we have our our tour guide, which I can't seem to see right now, but he will be available at that point. I assure you. If not, you can follow one of us up. Um, and so if you follow us, you can view the prayer happening. The Caliph will be leading the prayer, um, after which we'll come back here and through the hall to my right, uh, I, uh, I'm assured that there's a, uh, a, lovely, uh, a lovely meal prepared. So uh, 8.08, eight, we've got about four minutes left and then we'll have the, uh, the call to prayer. Thank you very much. I'm also told that the samosas are uh, non-veg. So if there's any uh, non-veg, non-veg, right? The samosas are non-veg. So if there's any vegetarians, we apologize for that. But there is vegetarian provisions, of course, 
with the pakoras. So the samosas are the triangle things. The pakoras are the uh, like the other things. Cool. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله Hey, 